Greetings, beloved. Welcome back to the Wednesday Word. I'm Chelsea. Beloved, it's been a minute since we've had the opportunity to connect here on the Wednesday Word, but today I want to take just a few minutes to talk about what God is saying right now. It's always important to seek God, to hear what He's saying in the here and now for you, for your family, what He's saying in general. God is so gracious that he does reveal things to us before they happen. But even with the revealing of things, we know in part and we prophesy in part. And it takes time to see the full revelation of even those things that have been revealed. It takes time to see those come to pass. When God first gave me the USA and China dream and the dream about a shifting coming to America, when he first gave me those two dreams last year, I understood what they meant to some degree, but I understood in part and now the other parts are starting to come into manifestation. I'm starting to understand more. But even in that situation, beloved, as things begin to progress, you should be asking God, God, what are you saying right now? God, what are you saying for me? What are you saying for my family? I always encourage you to seek God, to hear from God for yourself because God wants to speak to you directly. Sure, he has his men and his women who it's their primary role, it's their office to hear from God, to share with you. But with the same token, it's everyone's responsibility to hear from God for themselves, for your own life. God speaks to all of us in different ways. The same way he speaks to me is not going to be the same way that he speaks to you. God speaks to me in dreams and visions, predominantly always through the word, but also through the inner ear, through the spiritual ear, as well as audibly, not that often audibly, but in the spiritual ear through the welling up of the Holy Spirit. So beloved, God spoke to me through dreams last year. Now we're in the situation with COVID-19 where I'm starting to see some things play out. I'm starting to see the shifting in America that has already begun to happen. So I did nothing for a while because, you know, this is something that didn't really come overnight. It started building and building and then it seemed to be boom, everything just happened overnight. So I was silent for a while and then I finally went to the Lord and I said, Lord, what do you say, sir? Your majesty, your highness, what are you saying right here, right now? Beloved, when I sought the Lord for that, I heard nothing initially, but I know God and I know my relationship with him. Sometimes he answers me immediately. Sometimes he'll answer me in a dream right away. Sometimes he'll take me to the word and answer right away. Sometimes he'll give me a scripture right away. Sometimes he'll nudge me to speak in tongues and bring the interpretation of what he's saying that way. Sometimes he'll just be clear and just speak it to me. Sometimes, however, God wants me to just wait he wants me to just be still for a while and then he'll speak it. It's not always immediately or even within the same day or two. But generally, God always responds to me within three days. So recently, over the last two weeks, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what are you saying about this situation right now? I go into these details, beloved, because as you know, we are a teaching ministry. So I like to teach, I like to give instruction, I like to give demonstration so that someone who's watching me, it may not be for everyone, but someone who's watching me can start to understand that there's a process to hearing the voice of God and can start to begin your own process so you can learn how God deals with you, how God speaks to you, how God has been speaking to you. There's so many people who God has already been speaking to and you don't realize it because you don't take the time to be still and also because no one's ever told you. You've never had mentoring or instruction. I know that's been the case in my life. So, beloved, I sought the Lord for a couple of days, nothing, didn't hear anything, just kept seeking him again because I knew that on the third day, on that third day, he was going to respond. And sure enough, beloved, he responded in a way that I also hear him often. He responded to me through song. As I slept on that third day in the night while I was sleeping, I kept hearing the song. I believe it's called The Victory Is Yours by Bethel. I kept hearing that song playing over and over again. The victory is yours. Though kingdoms may rise and fall, yours withstands them all. Your name is unfailing. Your name is unshakable. I heard that song 
when I was sleeping, God always confirms things with me. So as I awoke out of sleep that day, throughout the day, I kept hearing that song. I kept hearing that song. I kept hearing the confirmation of the Lord. He went on to confirm, beloved, for days and days. I'm still hearing that song. What the Lord is saying right now is that the victory belongs to him. It doesn't matter what you see in the atmosphere around you. It doesn't matter what you see in this nation or in your nation where you reside. God is on the throne and there's no power that can dethrone him because the victory is his. What God is saying right now, beloved, is that kingdoms will rise, but some kingdoms will also fall. We've already seen that. We've already seen a shaking in the financial kingdom. We've already seen a shaking in the kingdoms around the world. We've seen a shaking in the political kingdom. We've also seen a shaking in some religious kingdoms. But God says, though kingdoms may rise and fall, and some will continue to fall, while some will rise, his kingdom is unfailing and unshaken because the victory belongs to the Lord. What does that mean exactly? It means that if you are a part of the kingdom of God, you have to be right there with God. You cannot be caught up in what's going on in the world. Your faith has to be right there with the Lord. Your faith has to be on his promises. Because, beloved, it is possible to be a part of the kingdom of God or say you are, but you don't understand or you don't connect with your faith. You're not hearing what God is telling you to do at each interval and fall. God will help you get back up again, of course, if you ask him. But it is vitally important for you to stay in tune, for you to start asking God for yourself. God, what are you saying? And just be quiet. Turn the noise off. Use wisdom, of course. I know you keep hearing that from Christendom. Use wisdom. But what is wisdom, really? Solomon, in the book of Proverbs, said, The fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. It's a time for you to fear God. It's a time for you to reverence God. When you reverence God, I mean, when you truly fear him, not that he's going to smite you dead. I'm not talking about that kind of fear right now. But when you reverence him, it means that you see him as Lord and Savior. You see him as your highness. You see him as your majesty. You see him as the most powerful God. You see him as unshakable, unfallible. When you truly see him that way, then you will keep your eyes focused on him, knowing that it doesn't matter what happens around you, you are connected to God because you're dwelling in his secret place where there's a covering, where there's a protection. And you know, you are convinced in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit, and with all of you, that when you stand with God, you cannot fall. The word of God says, when you've done all that you know to do, keep standing. It means, beloved, it's time to cast fear back to the pit of hell. It's time to take up your sword, which is the word of God and the authority of Jesus Christ, and stand strong with it. Let's see what you're truly made of. I would encourage you, if you don't have key scriptures already down in your soul, your spirit, and in your heart, start devouring those things. Start feeding on those things instead of the media 24 hours a day. Instead of fear, kick fear out, kick the word in, and start meditating on those things. Psalms 91, memorize it if you don't already know it. Psalms 23, memorize it if you don't already know it. The Father's Prayer, memorize it if you don't already know it, but just not for the sake of memorizing it. You want to speak those things out of your mouth, but as you speak them, you want your faith to start rising and building up so that it becomes not just words that are coming out of your mouth, but words that are affecting the atmosphere, words that are affecting your being. 
You can't just be a Christian to go to church, beloved. You can't just be a Christian in name only. There are those times when you have to truly stand your ground, and now is one of those times. There will be times again. I'm going to close out for here because I don't want to say more than the Lord has given me to say, beloved. But as we're closing out, I'm going to play this song, The Victory Is Yours. I do not own the rights to this song. It's by Bethel. I'm just going to play a small portion of it. And let this song minister to you. Go to the Lord. Let him speak to you further. But know that the victory belongs to the Lord. He is unfailing. He's unfallible. He cannot be shaken. Here we go. Our fight is with weapons unseen. Your fight is with weapons unseen. Your enemies crash to the Here we go. So we rise up and worship. And trials unleash like a spot today. God loves you. Rest in his secret place and take the victory with Jesus Christ. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.